Good. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, we'll start by reading the mission. Would anyone like to read the mission? Go ahead, Crystal. All right, to support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interests to enhance the university experience and opportunities. OK, Does everyone agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're ready to say aye. 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 Oh, great. Aye. <laughs> OK, let's take attendance. Uh, Denny Palacios. Matthew Rathbun here. Naomi Hawkins here. Tom Cheney here. Alejandro Casillas here. Michael Warner here. Kristen Nairgaard here. Online. Uh, Paul Nelson here. Thanks for the cue. Gabe Trujillo here. Hey. OK. Will is here. Uh, OK. Uh, someone remind me how to do the approval of agenda, please. Is there any changes that we made to the agenda? Oh, yes. I would like to just have added um, a section in new business, um, just that uh, I wanted to speak up for some students that are unable to make it to public comment today um, about some very serious issues they've had with work study and how we can um, address help those students um, potentially make it better for students in the future. Nice, I said on that level. Yeah, okay, sorry. one second. Also, probably one of those quite good students. The same, same. Okay. Sorry. We'll talk about it. Or were y'all like too much? Does better? everyone agree to this? Um, Paul has a. Go ahead. Well, well, let's vote on this first. Yeah. 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 Everybody that agrees, say aye. 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 Nice. Awesome. The eyes have it. Uh, Paul, go ahead. I was hoping that we could add the very end, and I'm I'm open to withdrawing this motion if we end up running a little tight on time, or if we want to, um, yeah, I, I, ultimately. But uh, uh, happy wagon. Just put happy wagon at the at the bottom. It's a, it's surrounding the. Uh, it'll be like a survey. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember the dentist toy chest styled yeah. uh, outreach idea that we'd um, heard from some of our peers. But I want to actually kick it off, and I, um, I have like a little proposed uh, amount to put at it to combine with some of our already existing swag. It's not super significant. It's kind of like a little beta test, so to speak. But I think it could yield some good results about what the uh, what kind of issues are affecting the students or how their experience is going. That's it. Beautiful. And if we don't get to it, would you okay with tabling it for next week? Oh, totally. This thing can wait until next week or the week after, but it's an idea. Oh, I'm sorry. They are adjusting the volume and I can't hear you. Hold on. Hold on. Please pause. Can you speak now? Yeah, not wouldn't be a problem nope. at all. Yeah. Nope, it's not. It's not working, Paul. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, give me a second. Hold on, Paul. Gotcha. So sorry. I didn't hear you after I asked the question. Can you hear me now? Yes. OK, yeah, I, I don't um, it truly doesn't matter if it's this week or the next week. Um, it's just one way we can expand the way we might hear from students. We're still going to continue to hear from students in other ways, so it's not a fatal thing to push it a week or two weeks. Um, totally open to doing that. If Sounds good. Uh, everybody that agrees with happy welcome, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Aye. You guys have it. Beautiful. OK. Um. As new uh, co-chairs, co we sure. were looking, oh, well, given the debate last week about uh, Robert's rules and stuff, we were looking at the Constitution and there's a little like conflicting language in it. Uh, some says that we refer to Robert's rules, some says we adhere to it. So we are proposing that for this week, this are just like place holding norms for this meeting. If we all agree to them, if not, of course, we can go back to what we were. But uh, so regarding Robert's rule, we will be referring to him, not like adhering to him, like precisely into like every single detail. Um, when bringing in a new initiative or proposal, come prepare with some details. And after talking to other council members or committees that will assist you to organize and structure your initiative. So after you have like a certain plan, uh, just just come up to us with some plan. 
Uh, brainstorming, lobbying, and extended debate should be done outside meetings. Come to me again. Come to meetings with substructure. We'll still, of course, over like the debate time. And I was wondering, maybe like seven minutes of debate time. And then for that one, um, if after seven minutes of debate we have not reached uh, like a, a conclusion to this, then maybe it's time for us to take our advocacy work outside of the meeting, and then go again, go lobby your fellow council members and then come back with the next meeting with an actual structure. Uh, sorry about the number five, it's taped there. Um, and then lastly, please be respectful and professional and avoid addressing anyone in the room with any derog derogatory uh, objectives. And I just want to add that most of these actually do echo Robert's rules of order with referring to committee. Yeah, that's where we got this from. Um, I motion that we vote on this. Uh, I second it. Okay. Everybody agree. Say aye, aye, please. Aye. Aye. Any oh, days? Um, can we discuss this at all? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Can we do the seven minutes? Will that be okay at least? I would second the motion to limit discussion of this to seven minutes. Okay. Would everybody agree with seven minutes? Say aye. 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 Okay, Paul. All right. Yeah, I uh, I like a lot of these things being proposed. I am a little worried in some ways about the um, the limiting of debate or discussion in these meetings. I think it should still happen, and as long as it's still happening and there's still room for like minority um, uh, opinion or uh, like presence in the room in like terms of the uh, issues being discussed, I'm I'm happy to move forward with these changes. I'm not married to Robert's rules, to be honest with you, but there's a few basic things that I've written down that um, I do really like about Robert's rules that I think we should try and make sure we implement in whatever practices and norms we move forward with. Because Naomi had told me to to consider and uh, think about some things that we should keep. Um, I want to talk about the fact that uh, Robert's rules lays out a clear agenda. That's when we do the approval of the agenda, make sure everyone's cool with it. Um, there's an order of precedence, which means if we um, say we uh, you know, make a motion to close close discussion that takes precedent over like previous motions that have been made and it kind of structures complicated decision making in a way that's useful. And I think that's good. Um, you know, having the structured format for debate, like the fact that we've limited this seven minutes here is a part of Robert's rules that we should keep because it's useful. We don't have to have a debate that cr like cr crawls on forever. Uh, the fact that there's quorum requirements so that decisions can't be made by like three people who show up at a meeting or maybe someone calls an emergency meeting, three people show up. Robert's rule doesn't allow for that. We actually need uh, two thirds of our membership present to make decisions and we should keep that. Um, minority rule with minority rights. Like I said, it, we should respect the decision of the whole council, but you know, the minority still has a right to express, um, you know, uh, the, the, the view in the decision making process, right? Uh, and take part in it. Um, clarity in voting, we have different ways we can have votes. We can do the, oh, sorry, my cat um, no, disconnected I, my earphone no, so I can't good. hear anybody, but um, clarity in, uh, in voting, uh, there is some level of conflict resolution present um, in being able to refer things to committee or um, like, like that. Um, efficient handling of motions, uh, we talk about things like amendments and revisions are like rules for how to handle those are kind of clearly laid out and then it's accountable and it's transparent. So um, I'm cool with whatever we end up doing as long as we do those things. Um, yes, and I I agree with you in the sense that we should keep some of the rubbers rule. So I will please ask you to meet with me uh, and Matt sometime next week so we can actually like iron and structure all of this. Uh, and then we can bring this to the uh, to the meeting next week with more detail. Mike. I'll add on. So in the reference to decisions, um, if you refer something to a committee, that's fleshing out the idea. That's fleshing out the idea of mm -hmm. fleshing out like, hey, Matt, this safety event, let's just let's come up with that in the PR committee. Mm -hmm. Then we'll bring it back. To the, it needs final council approval, of course. Yeah. But um, it's not making a decision of three of us. Like that's just, hey, committee doing its job. Yes. So, and I think that's what you guys are referring to when yes. you re bring up this document. So, yeah. So it's more to limit the bigger debates within yeah. the council to we're more focused on voting on ideas and fleshing like small or like bigger aspects of it out, um, and then working with committees or outside meetings to work through all the muddy stuff. 
Correct. And I mean, I believe it's in the Constitution. You, the USPR chair, do a lot of the event planning, and anyone can join the, that committee as well. So I just referring to the Constitution. That's right. That's all okay. I have. Um. And no, Paul, I like that. That's what the seven minutes are for. So as long as you come in with a, a like a resolution and some structure with it, uh, that would like the seven minutes will always be offered after a proposal or anything. You know, if you brainstorming or debate or, uh, but that will always be assured within the like within the student on Fridays. I mean, within the meeting on Fridays. Yay. Okay, so. I, I motion we vote for this placeholder I just second. for today. Second. Okay, um, everybody who agrees says aye. 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 Any nays? Awesome, the ayes have it. Abstentions. Oh, abstentions, yeah. Sorry, anybody abstained? No? Great. Um, okay, let's go look at our boards and committee announcements. Let's start with Mike, Board of Trustees. OK, so in preparation to the meeting on the 22nd um, of September, that's on the first board meeting, I've been meeting with all the vice presidents, the VPs to get a better picture of how the university operates. So um, this week I met with Dr. Benitez Monday. We had a really nice lunch um, to talk about kind of what his department does and how student government can get more involved in um, the diversity and inclusion aspect of what he does, his work. So he should be sending me some events that we can sponsor, we can go to. Um, there's a lot of good events. And then um, that Tuesday, I met with Dr. Moore, our provost. We had some discussions on the um, getting rid of the minor requirements, um, as well as the faculty workload. Um, and we just kind of had some discussions and um, running with views at some point to see how to take a drop hole. Thoughts on the minor requirements? Um, I personally think I don't have a minor, I don't need a minor for my degree, so I don't really find the issue with it. I just find that I have it done away with. Um, so that's just my thoughts there. And then I met Dr. Carpenter Wednesday to get a better overview of the budgets and then you can pack it. So I'll back it. So yeah, okay. Well, I just want to say like on a, as a perspective, we were talking about this in the biology department. A minor not being something that we have is yes, increasing our tuition or our tuition um our retention rates, and that's great. But then it's also putting some of our students in. I don't want to say like at harm, but they're not necessarily benefiting the best from their degree if they're not getting that minor necessarily. Because a lot of institutions, especially in the STEM field, are looking for you to have like that extra expertise um, or I guess entry level of experience in this field. So I think that that's also something they need to consider, even though it's already said and done. But I mean, it is what it is. So, Will, do you have something to say? Um, I have a question, but I'll move off till we get done. So it's already. Hey, that's it. OK, I'm curious. Uh, how did your meeting go with uh, the CEO? Oh, I forgot. We just did that, too. So I did meet me. <laughs> forgot. I know lots of this week. Um, so I met me and Bria Combs, student vice president of CU Denver, as well as Savannah. I met with the um, CEO of AHEC, Colin Walker. We had a conversation on um, kind of communication. This is a very so like three minutes, it was very kind of like, hey, let's extend the communication. Um, we didn't want to come in guns blazing. We didn't want to give away kind of our thoughts and our, our, our objectives moving forward. But we wanted to kind of give them the chance to disappoint us, you know? Right. So our goal is to further empower SACAB as well as, I, I mean, we said to her, we'd like to see changes changes that are happening to the university. We want a direct email from her, like, hey, to the student body, either leadership, so that'd be all the institutions or some sort of way. So um, we can meet there again next week or next month, um, but we're going to continue these talks about how to fix the communication issues between the students and uh, yeah. the So how did you feel like she was receptive? Or... She took a lot of notes. Um, she seemed pretty receptive, but um, you know what? Actions speak louder than words. So I look forward to seeing the changes that are made soon. So now we'll go forward my kind of plans. So that's me. OK. Thanks, Mike. Take so, um, up, Gabe and Kristen. Gabe, do you want to start or? I'm cool either way. You can go ahead. Okay. Um. Well, the only only updates that I have are that our first meeting is going to be on Tuesday the fifth at four fifteen. Um. And we we've already received the agenda, so we're we're ready to get going. And if Gabe has anything else to add. You may do so. I don't. That that's the only update I also had. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and just real quick, uh, I didn't read Paul comment, uh, Paul's comment, but it says uh, he's also glad that we went away with the requirement and we think we should uh, still encourage our fellow students to pursue minors if you can. Um, OK, we're done with CCAB. C, do you have anything for us, Ray? Nothing yet until the advisors say oh. they're changing this committee. Awesome. Nothing to do with the judiciary. Okay. We should like have like working with just points. Um yeah. budget committee, Alec. Uh for us. So we finally decided a, a meeting time it's gonna be Fridays bi weekly on teams at ten or at twelve PM. And that's about it. Oh, and the first meeting is gonna be next week. So Fridays at ten at ten? Uh sorry, twelve. Oh twelve. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, that. Um, yeah. so with it being right before the meeting, I think it'd also be a good opportunity if anybody can join. Yeah. Yeah. I mean anybody's welcome to join if they'd like. So yes, this with every committee. Anyone's yeah. able to join as long as we put in like meeting times or whatever. Or at least I think from now on though it'd be cool if like if your meeting times aren't like uh, concrete, like for instance, uh, Paul and I don't have a con concrete one yet. We can just like throw them in chat, like, hey, this is when it is. If you guys would like to join, here's a thinker. Yeah, yeah, just transparency. Yeah, just let so, everybody know what time it is and when or how you're meeting yeah. in the chat. And actually, to go along with Paul's comment in the chat, um, I think we could, if we have set meeting times, just to send a meeting invite to the whole council, just so it's on their calendars, so they know when stuff is happening and they join or don't join if they want. Okay. Yeah. Does that work with what you were thinking, Paul? Yep. Awesome. Uh, it's going to be on teams. Yeah. Sustainability committee. I have a couple updates. Paul, do you mind if I go first? Cool. Um, so Armando and I met with uh, some people from a uh, group called Aunt Flo. This company is this really awesome company that this woman, yeah, she uh, ended up inventing this company because she went to go on stage for like a presentation. She just started her period and she went to the bathroom and there was like no resources for her. Like, so she was like, I don't want this to happen to others. So she has this company. We got some budget um, logistics down and we just need to meet with ACP, which uh, I filled out the when to meet form. Um, so we're trying to figure out when that's going to be uh, and just go over like. Um, if we would want to make this just MSU, which means we then just have to only do MSU buildings, or if we want to do it as a tri-institutional kind of step forward, and then we would have to then talk to all institutions and what their budget would be, what they can contribute to get these uh, modules in the building. And there's different models that you can sign up for um, that are, you know, increase uh, in um, costs depending on which one you get. And then we did like a budget to just do like what maybe like the minimum might be for like um, just like a package deal every semester, which after honestly, after the installation, it looks pretty affordable. It's looking at like 8600 or something like that a semester. So that's really not that bad. And all of the products are biodegradable and they have had options and tamped on options. So I thought that was a good, really cool thing um, that they had going on. And yeah. Um, so, yeah. Paul, do you have anything? Uh, yeah. So, um, I, I I really do support the idea um, and uh, moving forward with that. I don't really bring any novel ideas into the committee at, at present. My um, my idea has been to meet with the SCP, find out where they're at, what they're working with, so that we don't reinvent the wheel of what they're doing. Um, we'll be meeting with them at some point in the next couple of weeks, and so our when to meets are finally lining up, and uh, we'll have a, we'll have a meeting with them scheduled and an idea of what we do beyond um, this initial idea. But we also, like uh, Naomi had said originally. Uh, we want to be practically minded. And so even if this first project was, you know, a main focus of the committee for some time, I think that would make sense to see it like uh, succeed. That's it. And I have some comments to that as well. Um, first off, I did actually mail back on the email. Um, I want to support that as much as I can. So let me know how I can help. Okay. I, did right there, like I may not be the best point person. <laughs> um, but also, I believe uh, you, Denver, already has yeah. that program. Yes. Uh, maybe not with Flow, but they do they apply do that. Yeah, yeah. And there's also a, I'll have to find it, but there's an education bill that 
has funding for um, those kind of products. It, when I was looking at the bill, and I think it's primarily for K through 12, but it's vague enough in the language that you might want to look into that as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, you could email me that. Yeah. I would love that. I can forward it to our mom. Yeah. Mike. So um, I actually had a coffee with Cassie. She's the assistant director of ACP. Yeah. Um, and something that she's going to bring up, and I, what I'm going to bring up to other schools is there's actually a climate action plan that they're looking to pass up to like the universities have them sign, each one of them sign. Okay. So there was one that was passed in 2003, but that one no longer kind of, it's kind of old and janky and isn't as the best in the mm -hmm. age. Um, so, but that is something that's thrown on your radar. Um, they will, they're fit, they're, um, Finishing it up and then they're going to send that out to you all soon. So it's that could be easy. something easily to advocate up and be like, hey, we should have um, this. And okay. I'm trying to get the other two schools involved in ACP more. So That's they'd right. love to host all of you. Right. Well. Yes. Let's do it. So, Thank you. Of course. Bye. I actually did look it up and it looks like it's K through 12. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, gave us a question for the sustainability folks who is doing the green purchase agreement with the clubs. Then Paul uh, uh, answered, we haven't had a meeting where we discussed taking that on. Uh, so um, I guess on a quick ahead of the game note here real quick, uh, Denny and I are going to be trying to meet with the student boards here um, maybe within the next week uh, for some diversity kind of talk and event planning. So I feel like maybe we could just have Paul in on that and we can just all discuss it together as one big thing instead of um, trying to make two separate events because it's probably really hard to get all the student org representatives together. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, do you have a? Well, I'd like to go. Did you actually skip me? Oh, I'm so sorry. PR committee. Oh my god. I won't take any offense. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for PR committee, um, I still need the people who join the committee to fill out the um meeting time uh survey. Um, so we can set a meeting time. I would like to be trying to meet next week. Um, I've already been doing some late work on some ideas. I've been reaching out to a lot of peer mentor programs um, to try and work towards like a needs assessment kind of meetings with each individual group. So we can find the trends of what issues are affecting some of our most vulnerable populations to see what we can try and bring back to student government. Um, and this might have to be more of a resolution later, but I'm also trying to after that, see if we can get representatives from these orgs to work with us and keep our like the voice of the students within the council a little bit better. Did you have something to add to me? I have been so glad in this video. Oh, and also that um, as part of the PR committee, we do. PR committee is in charge of like helping with a lot of the events. So anybody who has events and needs help flushing stuff out, that is what we're here for. Yeah. So there's two events that are coming up soon, and I would suggest putting on your calendar because, I mean, if these are going to be our events, you should be there. Yeah. Um, Fall Fest is the 20th. So um, and Constitution Day is the 18th. So um, those two events are going to be something we're going to take on. Um, next week, when the PR committee does meet, we're going to plan the event, and then we'll bring it to the council, of course. For final approval, um, but just put those on your calendar. I mean, full council approval, or uh, once we get full council approval, it's kind of kind of required to be there. Yeah, in one fashion or another. So, just putting it out there. And okay. your people's dates. Yes. So fall fest is twenty um, times two B T B D. Actually, I'll send out the calendar, but to make sure y'all have this from eleven. So eleven yeah. one. And then um, constitution day is going to be constitution day is going to be September eight. So, and I think we'll add a couple of things to add to. I'll go after Go ahead. So for Constitution Day, I'm currently writing well, I'm finished with the bill and we'll be presenting it next week. It is just mostly a basic rundown of like the dates and what we're trying to achieve, as well as some funding for for the event to be successful. But it's done. Sam has already looked over it. Had a few people look over it, so I'll be presenting that bill uh, next week. Thanks, Robert. 
Beautiful. And then I'll get with you to and set up to get the PR stuff started for that. Event. And then let's let Penny make a comment and then maybe you can also talk about what's on your screen actually. Yes, I'll bring that up and it's what's on. So. Uh, mine is also about Constitution Day. I also just wanted to update that given my she made me the primary content. Um, I do have a meeting with Senator Mara. Uh, we're going to have shots of the actual de details on like we're planning to do some like constitution based games, sort of like when you go to Bible school and they tell you like where in the Bible is the history of Jonah and then people will scramble to look where that is. Um, so, yeah, we're kind of looking into that again. Well, I will also come next week with some concrete ideas. Can you let me know in your meetings? I would like to try and brainstorm with you. Tomorrow. What well, because but we're also doing model U and stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, but or just we'll keep me updated. I will keep you updated. Promise right. on that. Uh, okay. Well, do you want to tell us about that? Oh, because we're doing open floor. Anyone? Or any? You, oh, this great. is. Oh. This is specifically for tries to keep So we'll bring it up. Okay. 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 Hi, Rick. Hi. <laughs> Apologies for being like you guys. So me, it was on the fourth floor instead of the seventh floor. Um, wanted to say I have continued. I, I told Dave over the summer, and I hope y'all don't mind. Um, and anybody else can join to the student travel committee. So I let Kenny know that, and I've already have a couple to score this week. But uh, it does take time. You know, it's not a quick thing. You have to really look over the things and, and score each one and get comment and back to seeing out. Um, and secondly, I wanted to ask. I don't know if it's in old business. Is anything in old business? Uh, your, the next event okay. and then the event went on. Okay. Thank you. Um, Paul? Um, I wanted to share just some information I found and in, um, some research about some proposed uh, budget changes uh, for this year. Um, and that's that they, they plan on raising tuition uh, for newly enrolled students by 5%, and it will boil down to $423 per year per student and increasing fees by $96 per year per student. Um, a friend of mine is doing some research on the AHEC parking situation, and uh, it looks like they made around $12 million just on parking alone last year. Um, and there's some other like kind of interesting figures that I think should all be taken into consideration when we talk about this, like the, the increasing shift to tuition dependence. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a problem for a lot of our students and, you know, it comes up. So I wanted to put that on people's radar and we should continue to look at that. And I, you know, I, I didn't originally sign up for the uh, budget committee that Tom uh, got on, but I might just try and join in meetings like Mike had talked about doing. So that's just a goal of mine that I think we should put on everybody's radar is, is this troubling shift to tuition dependence uh, that's been uh, continuing. Okay. Gabe? Awesome. Um, so my only question, commenting, Gabe, um, so as we know, you know, like our meeting days and not meeting days, our meeting places are, have changed. I'm just wondering if that is represented either on like on the website or something. So then students know where we're at and we can, you know, stay with them sunshine loss and all. Um, if it's not on the website, maybe like for the social media and stuff, like just like a post saying this is where we're going to meet um this day or something just to make sure students are aware of our new meeting places and gabe that is an excellent point i'm going to be trying to work on that this next week um even also maybe trying to get like our agendas or meeting minutes posted on our website as well awesome let me know if i can help in any way man appreciate it yeah. paul sorry to double dip i'll keep it short um I um, my the same friend who had looked into the parking situation also um, told me that he he found out that the students had uh, voted to increase fees to uh, by three dollars in 1991 in order to purchase back the Tivoli Student Union from some third party um, and they chose to do that and paid for it with student fees and I'm not sure um, about the transition between then to now where students are having a lot of trouble getting space you know like the city's hub is gone and we actually have to wage this kind of like lengthy fight for a spot, which is it, it, it's not cool. And, and I know, um, you know, it had been raised by members of the community and uh, st fellow students. Uh, actually talked about it in the email. Uh, sub, uh, 
I forget how they, like student bonds having having paid for the space. And so I think we should clear up that picture too uh, of like, you know, this is a student student union. It was paid for by students, um, you know, unless there's some information of the contrary there. Um, and it should definitely have more space for them. And I think the more information we have about that, the more power we have going into these conversations about getting space back for students. OK, yeah. we'll look into it. With, uh, we should probably pause for public comment. With the um, phone yeah. Public comment. If you have anyone online, just please make yourself known. This is probably not the place to ask for opportunities, but I feel that we should move this back. We have such big agendas that it's tight to get to that number to at one o'clock. Yeah, I think, especially with advisor updates. And I don't know where the point is to bring that up, but I think it's something we should consider just pushing it back just a little bit. Yeah. Maybe to like one thirty in the study, or even one fifteen. You know, yeah. just that little buffer. I meant to say that last week too. So, um, yeah. Sorry if it's in the wrong place. No, nope. we're good. Well, I uh, just want to say something real quick. Just keep in mind, one to one fifteen is public comment. Um, if somebody did jump in later on, one to one fifteen is time where people can jump in. Why didn't we can just continue? Okay. It does look like someone's typing in the chat though. Someone's typing right. in the chat. Oh shit. There they are. Oh. Awesome. Okay, you have all the comment. Okay, I'm calling Kelly. Yeah, Kelly, if you want to unmute yourself for public comment. And just to be clear, everyone has five minutes per person, but go off. Oh, Kelly actually said her mic's not working at the moment. Um I will read. Okay. Uh Kelly says sorry i can't have my mic on at the moment but my name is kelly hall and i am at the community organizer for black etc we were wanting to discuss having spaces open to students organizations together and coordinate our efforts we were told it would be unfair to have a place just for us but to my understanding this is already being done for another organization can we get clarity on this also i know that we were directly to join sake we were directed to join said SACOP's advocacy work and committee to promote formal spaces, but they are not up and running yet, to my understanding, question mark. I think we would prefer just getting a better understanding on the spaces that are available now and the spaces that seem to be already in use by other groups. It's a clarifying question. Um, we do have members of SDS here. Do you? Yeah, is this regarding SDS? Kelly? Somebody needs to speak that's not speaking. Also, I'll just put it out there. Public comments, we don't have to respond to public comments. You can choose, you have the choice, but you don't have to respond. And Kelly responded, yes. Yes, it is. So, yes, it's not, we are in any way to have to respond. Paul, will, do, do you want to go before Paul or do you want to let Paul go? I think before we respond, because we're at 103, we still need to allow everyone else to have their public comment first. Okay, well, then is let's, that yes. yeah, then let's wait for Tristan. To finish. So that's the end of Kelly's public comment. We move on to Tristan. Okay. And that's what it's. Um, still, Matt, when it comes, they give you and Paul would like to respond. Yeah. As long as we have enough time before the 115 part, because that is designated just to those conversations. Sure. From yeah. My yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay, Tristan said, I second Kelly's concerns and the concerns raised by X in his email to TSAC on behalf of uh, Black Era. I also am unable to unmute at the moment. Um, there's one more. Yeah, auto coming. Looks like two more. And, uh, X. Who's raising his hand? And it's just Kelsey Stark. Okay. 740, executive speed, top of Tivoli. To know where we, oh, uh, we are at 740 in the Tivoli. You have to take the elevator that's across from the brewery.
Um, Autumn says, I third these concerns. We would love to have some clarification how this process works so we can plan our semester moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, keep it being stack. Do you want to go ahead? Uh, no, because Paul was first and then. And then. Oh, Charles. Huh. Okay, I, I don't know. I think you've been in um, person a couple times. Okay, sorry about that. I wasn't there. Okay, hey, Kelly, second. Gotcha. Okay, well, there's one Kelly uh, Gabe is uh, answering that SACAB is going to meet on Tuesday at uh, 4.15. Um, Gabe, would you mind just putting in the chat where you're meeting so they know where this is going to happen? And a link if it's virtual. And a link if it, thank you, Naomi. Gotcha. Um, okay, um, Paul, do you want to answer? Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, I want to just echo sentiments from even last year. I want to extend, uh, I know maybe not everybody on the council agrees, but I think that if you're a student at MSU on our campus, you have a right to be in uh, exist in our office and use the space, use our computers, or, um, you know, especially with the way in which uh, clubs have been uh, choked off by the restriction of Siggy's hub. I do think that it's reasonable to use some of the space in like our closets or, um, even some of our shelves to um, make room for student orgs that are at this point in time having difficulty uh, finding space. I will say to the concerns of SDS using the office, um, you know, I'm I'm not closed about my membership in SDS, Students for a Democratic Society with with Tom as well. Um, it's it's a big part of how we advocate. You know, um, we're some of the within this organization. We're some of the most civically involved um, students. Um, we, we go to state legislative sessions, advocated for the ICWA resolution that was passed at a state level, advocated for some abortion rights legislation that was passed at a state level, as well as our direct action in democracy. And I, you know, I think it's a good thing. I think we should expand that resource to anybody else that wants to use our office to advance like democracy and, and civic engagement. I think that's a big part of our mission statement is, is uh, well, maybe not our mission statement, but a big part of what we, we talk about whenever we talk about elections and Constitution Day and everything else is civic engagement. And so um, I wanna welcome a continued conversation about how we can allow Black XR into our office. I think a big obstacle we're facing right now is figuring out like, when is the space open? Because um, it's really irregular. We need to set up some hard schedules so people can know when they can access the space and use it. Um, and I personally think it's reasonable to extend uh, badge access even to or like registered organizational officers. But again, I know I might be in the minority of that opinion. So I just wanted to share my thoughts on and I want to thank everybody for voicing their opinions on the on the thing. So. And Naomi, did you have something to say? I think it was Kevin. Oh, Sounds like you hear some other voices before me. That's OK. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would like to voice that, like, although Paul, you were speaking this now, there was a lot of discussion last term with all of the TSAC members that did not indeed feel make Black Air feel welcome in that space. And I understand that sometimes, like, student orgs need to put their stuff in a space for like a couple of weeks at a time. And I know that's not necessarily viable. And I get that. So maybe if this is a discussion where we need to, because that is student space, y'all are paying for your student fees, you should be allowed to use that space, period. So I feel like if that's the case, then TSAC needs to have a conversation with all the student orgs and let them know like, okay, these are the set rules. You can keep your, you know, stuff here for like X amount of days. So that way, like we can work on getting room for everybody in that space if something, you know, comes out to for an event or whatever it may be. Um, but Paul is 100% right. There's a student space. Y'all paying for the student fees. They should be allowed to get it. Um, as when it comes to the card access, though, I do feel like to avoid theft, I do think it would be a good idea to only allow exact numbers in there still and to make sure that we do have that schedule up and then share that with the student orgs and share our emails and make sure they have direct access to us because we don't want accessibility being a problem that they don't have access to these rooms. I know I damn well don't go into that office all the time and sit there and use one of the desks all the time. So there's no reason why I don't think student orgs couldn't use a desk there, but they have to understand that it is also a community desk so that way they can use it for other or other student orgs can use that as well. Um, and um, but yeah, so I think that that's something we should also look into potentially doing. But yeah, y'all are right. We have this. This is on our agenda to try and get a student space more organized for the majority of students. Um, right now, it's just funding. A heck, of course, is really shitty at communicating. I have no apologies about my language because it's true. Um, 
and trying to just get what we need in those spaces for these students. Um, so yeah. And X comments with the X, right? Yeah. X comment said, can someone please request an extension on public comment to remove it? Um, I motion to I motion to extend public comment by seven minutes. Um, I have a clarifying question. I, I think we clarified and said if there's someone else who has the public comment period, they get their five minutes. Okay. We have to extend it. Okay, so is there someone else in public comment that needs to speak? Hands up. Kelly. So it's still it was Kelly. Well, we have someone in for public comment. That's it. Yeah. yeah, five. Would you like to use your five minutes? Yes. Right. Um, give me a moment so I can situate myself. Okay, um, I do have something to say. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I have a question are the advisors here? Online. You give a round us online. Okay. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Can And online here, X? Yeah. Awesome. Just let me know when, like, five minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is X. Um, that is the name that I prefer to go by. My pronouns are she and his. Um, but my name is Antoine Johnson. I'm an entrepreneurship major and minor here. Um, I am a former member of the Student Advocacy Council. Um, the language that you all have on the website, as well as written in our referendum, was authored by myself. Um, and the student senate of the former student government assembly here. Um, so it's great to be here in person. I wanted to make sure um, that I visited you all in space. Part of the reason that I'm here um, is I wanted to just call attention to how the narrative has changed. I can say firsthand myself, even being here in this moment, I feel a level of uncomfortability. Um, just because of the experience that I had the previous semester. Thank you, Naomi, for um, highlighting that experience, the unwelcoming energy that Black Era often experience with TSAC. Um, and I also want to voice concerns that if what was said today by some of the TSAC members about accepting of student clubs and organizations into TSAC was a thing prior to me asking for it again because I did ask multiple times and we were rejected last time. Um, our stuff that came up missing that Dr. Kwan Tan Nguyen ended up um, recompensating Black Era for would have still been housed in TSAC had we not felt the way that we felt. Um, and our stuff was moved from the SGA office um, and we were notified by that electronically um, I've been looking for the email to try to identify who, who ended up moving our stuff. But long story short, our stuff ended up coming up missing, and we ended up losing hundreds of dollars of items, including banners, marketing, office supplies, et cetera. As some of you have known, um, yesterday we had our Black August event, and it was extremely successful. One of the number one things that came up from Black students is, how do we find you? Where are you meeting physically in space? I want to give some historical context as well. CMEI was created maybe about five to seven years ago. I may be off. Um, we can confirm it with Dr. Budong. But long story short, there were conversations with the Black Student Alliance, ASU, and other cultural ethnic uh, student organizations in the past about creating a space for us because of the issues of the matters that were being experienced in SGA, where people did not always feel welcomed. Um, and then in addition to that, there was a lot of competition of space in Siggy's Hall as a result of fraternity and sorority life, which took up a huge residence there. I want to go on further to say that part of the reason why I'm here today is Black Era has been extremely successful in our past three years of existence. We won every single student organization award except for one. And I think that speaks volumes to my team and what we are committed to doing on this campus to center marginalized voices um, especially in this entity here that we see student government. There aren't a lot of people that look like me here, and that's part of the issue. And so when we're thinking about how do we create a campus that meets the needs of all of us, space is part of that equation. I want to say firsthand, I did not appreciate the email that I received. 
And so, as you all know, my email in response to you all was extremely lengthy, and I tried to provide historical context in addition to um, some of the sentiments of me and my team. But I would like to ask um, this council to really begin to check their biases. I understand that student leadership is very challenging. I understand that um, to what I have heard from the community, and I will not voice the names of the students who have said this, that members of this council have expressed that it's hard to work with me. I don't think that's the case. I think if you understand the background to which I come from and the background to which the organization has been founded on, you want to understand why we push the way that we do. Um, I would like to go on further to say we welcome you all's involvement in our organizational events. We would like for um, our members as well as members of the community to meet you all. There were all kinds of students from different backgrounds who were kicking in and hanging out with Black Era. So I do want to extend a welcome to you all. And I think um, where we could move forward together is um, if you all would be willing to host our open house. Um, why we don't have a space so that we can have the members get to know you. You can get to know us, um, get to know some of the work that we're doing. Um, and then the last thing, I just wanted to add some historical information as well. Yes, we all are familiar that February is Black History Month, but everyone is not familiar that August is Black August, and Black August is a commemoration. Sorry, I we're willing to give you another three minutes. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, Black August is a commemoration um, to the legacy and quest for freedom on behalf of Black people. As you all know, civil rights started and was initiated with Black people, and we all benefit from those civil rights. As you all know, that Africans, enslaved African captives, helped to build this nation, and that there was never any right compensation to my ancestors with regards to the nation that we all live in, that we all are benefited from, from enslaved captives labor. I think it's important that as we continue to look at this democracy that we are creating and recreating, that we pay homage not only to my ancestors and those who have helped to aid this country to where it is, but we need to start looking at our intersectional identities. I think one of the ways that we can do that is to learn each other's histories, to learn each other's backgrounds, to learn what each other need. I understand we're in a challenging time, but I think how we start connecting is really going to change how we revolutionize this campus. I know it's very uncomfortable to have these conversations. Trust me, living with that historical inference, it's very uncomfortable to live in that daily, but I think the opportunity is to heal. And so I'm encouraging this body of folk to really start to look at how can we heal together? Do I have all the ideas? No, one thing I can say is, um, how we connect to our counseling center. I know Dr. Vicki is doing some talkback sessions. Some of you all may have seen her yesterday coming into CMEI, um, but I think if we really push that to our student population, we can really start to heal together. And then also let's have fun this semester or also this academic year. But thank you all for my time and thank you for the additional three minutes. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I would like to say something. Um, no, thank you for coming and speaking and letting us know uh, about your concerns. Uh, this week, Kenny and I have uh, started to clean out the office to hopefully provide some more space for everyone involved in the office. Um, please meet with us. And um, yeah, we'll, we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we would like to meet with you. That's right. Okay. Thanks. So. Yeah, of course. Keep it being stuck. OK, mm -hmm. so real quick also, um, to provide some context here, um, I took a look at those emails. And when I say that uh, I wanted to address this earlier, I want to make sure like, I'm on record saying it, of course. Um, the way that we handled replying back to X's um, like, requests from us and everything like that, I don't think it was appropriate because although that we have certain people in charge of our emails, I think that we should come together as a team when something like this happens and to provide context because sometimes like the historical relationships between 
previous students and the council are misrepresented and that's really hard to understand. So we don't understand how to validate where these students are coming from when they come to us again with these fearful, um, you know, insights. You know what I mean? Like I'd be afraid too to come to us if like I wasn't welcome and my stuff got thrown away and there was hundreds of dollars that went into that because sometimes that comes out of students' pockets, right? Uh, because yes, they have funding for these student stuff, but we all know CMEI can't afford to be giving us the money that we need for our student organizations. So with that being said, um, it's not that I'm knocking anything that we said. I'm just saying next time I feel like it'd be more appropriate if we just replied and be like, hey, I before I respond to this, I want to make sure that I have all the right context here, that I'm representing each and, one of, uh, each and every one of us uh, from the council and from the other students perspective in the most respectful manner. Um, please let me get back to you in the next like, you know, two two business days at, at most. We'll say two business days because it's hard to get everyone scheduled together, of course. So um, I just think like next time we should do something like that. And I don't think that this is bad. I think this is a great learning experience. And that way all of us are now um, aware of the emotional integrity that needs to be involved with responding to our students. Okay. So have, uh, Thanks, Naomi. Something to add to that. Um, and actually kind of directed at X. Um, so with like the email you sent, if we replied that we're doing that and it's going to take a couple of days, would that be like an okay response for you? Because I do I notice just, that I like the... Did, I sent it. Did you see my reply I, I I, May I interject real quick? I yes. think... I think that when Naomi said it on regarding past experience, it is very true. There is a lot of historical emotion that we had that we we were not able to address. So I personally would like to have a relationship with Black Era mm -hmm. and yourself. Uh, before we move forward with any other agreements that we have. So I would like to personally meet with you. Um yeah, because like right now the whole like how the email was addressed correct i did not have that context so i would like a personal relationship with you before we go forward with anything else yeah. and that's how we move forward from here on now yeah i um i welcome that and to your statement i do think it's appropriate to say to folk if you don't have all the answers can we have some time so yes and i that would have been appropriate um i understood you all uh you were just getting started so i did want to give that consideration but i also understood too like i have shared in the email that you all had underwent some of the training and you also do have some season folks so that's that's kind of like it's like i see it but then it, mm -hmm. i'm also yep. pushing to have the conversation i and to your point uh michael i did not see all of my emails just because i was playing it in a way so if i missed your email my apologies i will go back to my email um, and respond to it once I do it. Okay, Gabe has a comment. Gabe, I'm gonna close with you because we have to keep going. We haven't even gone to like the committee and and broad. Uh, I mean, sorry, board updates. So please go ahead. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um. So quickly, I just want to say um that I uh, I contacted Alyssa um from SACAB. She's our new SACAB uh, advisor. Um and. And so we will have uh, 740. So the meeting place was just right now changed uh, to 740 in the Tivoli, I believe. And um, and the Zoom link can be found on our SACAP page. Uh, yeah, and and there will be place for public comment there as well. Thank you. OK, can you Thank add you. that room change into the chat, please? Yes. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> OK, they changed the room to this room. Okay. okay, I motion we move forward with a uh, comedian announcement. Thank you for coming. Okay, everybody that agrees says aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Great, the ayes have it. Uh, faculty and Senate, that is me. Um, I was at the faculty Senate meeting uh, a couple of days ago, and a big discussion of this is how the D minus uh, counts for credit, but it does not. Uh, allow students to, to take uh, upper division classes. Um, what classes? Upper division classes. A lot of upper division classes require a C or more. Um, so I was talking to Matt and the PR committee, and I don't want to make uh, like a big deal out of it, but I do think that at the very least, we I want to start a campaign called Look Ahead that we can at least put some posters and the and the or like flyers in the bathroom stalls where we communicate to freshmen like, hey. 
uh, make sure that you're at least getting a C because once like I I did not think about prerequisites until I was registering during like my second semester of school year. Um, there's a lot of stalls, so I'm gonna need help putting this flyer up. Mm -hmm. Um, did we get permission to put these stalls? Because in certain areas, um, you, we they're reserved specifically for the Phoenix Center, so we right. can't just put those up. And in the JSSB, those might be reserved for other folks as well. Um, but we should fly regardless. Just I would double check on which bathroom stalls. And and I'm not married to the like putting them in the bathroom stalls only. Like of course, and then I will have more ideas. This is just a thought right now that like we should probably be telling freshmen to. Get the shit you should, yeah, sure. uh, like it's hard, and but that's why we're here for. Um, Lisa, if you want to get into this, I would appreciate any help or any ideas, any comments. Like you said, like if you I have knowledge, building, yeah, like if you have any comments on like where where will we be allowed to put flyers, where we're not. Um, we also have. Uh, I can bring Kevin in, or we can get Kevin virtually, and he used to help us out with the Tivoli specifically, and he works specifically for AHEX events, and he can tell us like what the it requires to have on our flyers in order to keep them up. Would you connect me with him? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Just yeah. And when you're ready, you tell that we'll all be your team to, you know, thank you. Yes, yeah, so I would thank you. love to meet with you to work on that campaign. I actually do know a lot of um, how flyering works around campus, um, and I have some other ideas on how to get the information out there. Awesome. I will keep you guys updated. Thank you for your support. Let's um, go. Oh, wait, did anybody have anything? Gabe? You have your hand up, dear? Uh, no, I can't take it down. Um, can someone take it okay. down? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Dean of Council, Paul. Uh, we are meeting, I believe, Wednesday next week. I would welcome anybody to join me in that meeting. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if they're expecting more than one person, but um, I'd say let's push the envelope a bit if you want to show up. But um, otherwise, I'll just be officially representing us. I'll try to take some thorough notes so that we'll have a, a good report uh, from what's going on at that level next week. Nothing to anyone? Awesome. Uh, Will. Awesome. Hello everyone, and uh, some updates. I met with the my fellow SGAs, and uh, basically we are all getting together on Constitution Day. It's such a requirement, and again, wrapped it up the bill. Probably see it next week. Um, something else that was brought to my attention was that there's a conference in October for SGAs, and that's who that is participating in. And I just want to bring it to the council's attention that that's happening. So that might be a possibility that we could look into. Awesome. Where is it, where is it at? DC. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Okay. And it should be a good time, a good learning experience for people who haven't attended uh, these types of conferences before. So I figured that I'd bring it up. So well, this is something student travel support. Right, exactly. Yeah, let's let's talk to PR. No, I'll just probably not all like right. But we can discuss those details further out offline. But uh let's see what else do I have. Um I didn't have time to say this earlier, so I'll use this time right now. Um next week the director of campus rec will be here and if you have any ideas uh anything you want to do with campus drawing, please. Start thinking about some of this. All I know is we pay. So what do what do we get? <laughs> That's what I'd love to know. That's yeah. a little gym. Yeah. Wait, awesome. you guys want to know what you get for campus rec? I can tell you. So well, can, yeah. Okay. Not, do this. Oh, do you want it right now? It's very short. Like basically you get opted into as long as you're taking one credit course that is not online, like you are on campus or whatever. Um, you do get access to the rec room, um, which is like our gym, and then you get also get access to our it's classes. Um, which they have spread in different classes like boot camp, yoga, yada, yada. You get access to the climbing wall. You get access to the stuff that's an outdoor rec, which you can go on rent. They have uh, camping gear. They have, I think they still have kayak. Um, all those nets that you see out for like football, volleyball, or for soccer, volleyball, um, that kind of stuff. They rent that stuff out to the students as well. They have cornhole, I think, multiple different types of games. They also um, do trips for students to go out to like Moab to do with like rock climbing, stuff like that. You have to sign up. And I think it's like, at low cost so like you're not paying 
being like an excess amount. I think it's like 250 per person or something like that, depending on how many students go. Um, kind of like how they discount field courseworks for the biology department. Um, and then you also get access to the, like I said, the rock climbing wall and all the gear to do it is free to rent as well. So, awesome. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any questions about anything I've said? No, I don't follow as is. Paul. I, I, just a quick question, Will. If the campus rec are the same people who share the third floor of the Tivoli over next to Met Media, I'd be interested to hear at least a couple minutes about how they fundraise because I know they had a really successful one last year and maybe just some tips uh, from them on, on their fundraising efforts uh, would be really fruitful. So just if you could put that in their ear. I don't know if they had a more specific presentation in mind, but um, it'd be cool to hear a little bit about that. Well, can I say something? Yeah, for sure. Uh, to address what you're saying, next week she'll be here, and you can ask her that yourself. Um, I think her focus is to up numbers of like student participation in the, the campus right? So I don't think she'll be coming with that mentality, but that's definitely a good question you can ask when she's here next week. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Dr. Barron, do you have anything to say on anything to update us on? Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so the big updates I have for you all are two things I wanted to make sure that I took care of. One of them is um, I met with uh, Dr. Manny Del Real, who is our executive director for HSI um, initiatives here at, here at the school. And we I was helping him with planning HSI week, which is um, September. It starts September 11th, so it will be that entire week. And he did ask me, um, if there are ways that um, you all could either be present at some of the or some of the events or just help promote it to students. Um, and he ne didn't necessarily ask for co-sponsorship, but more so. Are, can you all hear me? Hello? Yeah. Are oh, you still loud, and, loud yeah. and clear, Dr. Brown. OK, I'm like, <laughs> um, and but he did want like some kind of partnership and i told him that i would make the announcement today and um the flyers and information should be forthcoming so i'll make sure that i send that out to you all but he said he would love student government presence um at our hsi week so just wanted um to share that with you all um and then the other thing is president's cabinet i know that mike represented you all um for the August meeting, um, but I wanted to share the additional dates of President's Cabinet for the rest of the semester um, and see how um, you all wanted to handle um, sending a representative. I think in the past y'all have rotated, which apparently now is fine as they've adapted to your model. So, um, but I did want to give the dates and see if we could at least figure out who will be there in September um, and then what we typically have done in the past is just send them the names of who the representatives are going to be. And it's usually um, one person and then anyone can go and attend president's cabinet. But really that one person is there, um, you know, sitting with the other senior leaders. Um, so the first one is on September 21st. The second one is on October 19th. And um, the third one is on November 16th. And um, we typically work with Ed Brown to get um, the invite and everything scheduled for whoever will be repping you all. Right now, I did not see a, a president's cabinet meeting in December. That doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just might mean it's not in my calendar yet, but um, I just wanted to make sure we're proactive on that end. Um, yeah, and that's all I can think of right now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Baron. Anyone has uh, anyone has any questions, comments, concerns on that? No, nope. beautiful. Paige says he'd like to sit on the president's cabinet. Okay. Woo! <laughs> we got our one. Thanks, guys. For September. That works for me. I can do September. If okay. that's okay with I don't know if you all need to vote on it or whatever, but I'm just. Oh, no, if he can do it. <laughs> if he can do it, let him do it. 
Thank you, Gabe. Appreciate it. And there's another hand up. Uh, I think I that's Kelly. Yeah. yeah, they can't. For some reason, they can't lower their. their oh, hands. I see. Yeah. Sorry. No. Okay. Um. All business. Naomi. Discussion the multiple. Yes. So the multicultural cultural organization campus. So I think with this, um, I don't think we voted on this on who's going to be like on this committee. I don't want to be the chair, but I want to be on the committee. Um. So I feel like we should vote on that eventually. But I'm not making a motion. I'm just saying, throwing that out there. But I was talking with Denny and something that we we're going to speak about later this afternoon is that we want to contact all student orgs um, and just kind of put in an email and say how we want to hold an event that really brings the culture of as many student orgs and ethnicities that we have here on campus, although we are an MSI slash HSI institution. How often do we really see other people's culture being really expressed here? Like we have the powwow, we have Black Arab, but like that's it. What about our Arabic friends or yeah. our people from, you know, Jerusalem or Ethiopia? Like um australia like i'm sure we don't really have a huge number of people from like other countries but that doesn't mean that like there's still not different ethnicities on this campus that need to be represented in some way and obviously we're not going to have the funding to necessarily do that academically but we need to at least try to do it with like cultural events so a couple ideas i was throwing out was like a food event where like we hired different food trucks because we found like jamaican food truck we found ethiopian food truck um we have uh Miss Yellow Hawk, who can do fried bread on the Native American side. And then we also have like Bapusas for the Peruvian Salvadorians. I don't remember. Salvadorians. Thank you, Salvadorians. And then obviously, like, we can get like Mexican food and like Spanish food. food. Soul food. Hell yeah. I mean, soul food in Denver. I mean, we got to find somebody I for that. Somebody in my neighborhood. We, has we better find them, but I'm down. Anyway, okay. my point is, we want to like have something like that. And I was also thinking of uh, something like, this is just me because I'm biased. I like to dance. I think it'd be cool to have like um like a it's not a dance off, but like a dance compilation. Just like everyone come in, show off their moves from like their different parts of the world. I think that'd be like really cool to have. So like somebody out here doing like bachata or salsa or like we got the butterfly step out here. Like it would be cool, you know what I mean? Um, just something to like really celebrate and emphasize your culture and influence others with that. It would be a really important event. So, and even if it's the only one we have for the whole semester, that's still bringing more to the table than MSU Denver has done in like shit decades. So, yeah. Um, let's let's brainstorm about this and let's do some some things. Um, because we were talking about the period, like the the end flow. Uh, and I think period gets looked at from different perspectives uh, depending on the culture. So I think right. that could also be thrown in there. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about this outside the meeting just because. Yeah, and then we'll bring we will bring structure. Right. Yeah. In the next couple of weeks. I'm just saying uh, Dr. Brown. Dr. Barra, do you mind if Dr. Barra goes first? Go, go ahead, Dr. Barra. Hi, um, I just wanted to respond, Naomi. I think that's an awesome idea. And I also want to, uh, what's the word? <laughs> I don't know what the word is, um, but um, just, I guess, give you all a little bit of context. This has happened before. I mean, maybe not in the way that you're framing it, but um, at least the dance part, we did have like a multicultural welcome back dance um, when CMEI first um, was established back in 2018. And we actually did it with CU Denver and their Center for Identity and Inclusion. So it was bi-institutional. Um, and we had a really great turnout. We didn't have food trucks and like all the extra stuff that you just talked about. We did have food um, and we had a lot of folks show up and it was really well attended. And we did it behind the Tivoli um, where like the beer gardens are. Um, and we probably had maybe 100, 150 students show up between both CU Denver and CU UCD. So it has happened before, but maybe not exactly the way that you just talked about it. And we did it, I think, two years, um, 2018 and 2019, and it was pretty successful. I partnered with Soyan Bueno, uh, the director of Asian uh, Student Services over at CU Denver. Um, she's a good friend of mine. And so it has happened before. And I think it's a great idea. And I think it will. Um, it will. I think get a lot of students engaged. So just wanted to offer some context. Um, Thank you. Um, just so I understand that we've had dances before, but I just want to point it out that like this isn't just a dance. Like this is something very specified to embrace everyone's culture specifically. I feel like when you go to dance, you hear like, oh, 
Like you got the Dougie, you got the two step, you got the soldier boy, like you got the Cupid shuffle, like, okay, cool. We get it. We, we don't give a shit. You get that at every single day. We want somebody to come out with those Astro beats. Somebody coming out with like the bachata beat, somebody coming out with like the Peruvian, the Salvadorian. Like we want the Asian beat. I don't even know what the Asian beats be, but listen, somebody gonna tell me and we gonna figure it out. Okay. But like that's the point is I want it to be very specific to embracing each and every culture here. I ain't never been to a club and heard some like Arabic beats. Let me tell you, they pull out some Arabic beats. I'm gonna look up something on YouTube and figure out how to dance to it. Like it's just facts. Like we want, yes, yeah, Korean pop. There we go. We want stuff like that. We don't want to just hear the like consistent club music over and over again like dance brings people together but i think we need to influence one another with it as well okay. uh, just to make a point of clarification like that uh we're gonna do matt and then paul kind of long dance we're talking yeah. all right yeah. go ahead matt so semi-tangential to your event idea i would love you to join some of the conversations um with the pr committee how we're trying to reach out to the diverse student populations bring their voices in Right. Awesome. Paul? Um, I just wanted to say that um, when I was at, attending high school at uh, Hinkley, we had this thing called Culture Fest. It was really cool. It had like a performative aspect, not performative in the in the negative way, but I mean, like there was like almost like a talent show where people could bring in um, like uh, performance elements of, of like cultural identity, if that's like written, you know, written word or if it's dance. We had Maori students. Um, I'm probably butchering that but we had maori students who did a haka and stuff there was some oh, beautiful. Uh, it was always a really good time and then it was paired with this like the you know the food from all over the place because there was really you know it was really a melting pot of a school um and we're a melting pot of a school so it'd be cool to have um maybe a i, I don't want to call it a talent show but some sort of like you know opportunity where we give folks uh the chance to sign up if they want to like you know share some element of of uh, their cultural identity. Um, I'm all for cultural generation and expression. So I, I think that we should definitely work to advance some events that promote this. It's a big part uh, of national Alan, identity. Alan Sorry. Henry. No, um, yeah, I just wanted to add that I would like to be on that committee as well, just considering that um, the position that I've only seen at CME, I, I do have um, access to a lot of the organizations there, so I can definitely help you out with reaching out to them and getting it set up. So thank you. Three. I just thought it could add a bit of flavor if we had a field trip to the International Festival in Denver on September 23rd, the Saturday, because they will obviously have planned an amazing array. So maybe we could, you know, get some ideas and also get some names for food trucks and different things. Right. Wait, what's the name of the festival? Denver International Festival. Can you I think that could that probably be or want Honestly, why don't we just like instead of that then how about we just like offer to like well i guess it wouldn't be on campus because i have no. ideas that i want to be like on campus I'll this, is not our student student this is our right? student yeah. yeah so yeah. with this kind of thing i'm just saying ideas of you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i think yeah. that's great and then networking, networking. Yeah. Okay. yes so right. good and but then it's important for the student body Right, feel connected. So that's why I okay. think you're right. Yes, fantastic. After our meeting today, we'll, I will send either Naomi or I will send an email on the update of our meeting, and then let's send some sort of like sign up sheet or awesome. something for people to bring. We need to move that back just a few hours, but, or just an hour. Okay, we'll we'll talk. Okay. Well, if you want, I'm gonna close it with you, and then we'll go. So if I have a chair for this community, how about we just like you guys set, we send it like a time meeting time. Yeah. Most people. I don't think we need a chair for this community. So just, yes. I, I feel like it's a, it's an extension of the PR community in that case, and I'd like to be involved. So. Okay, beautiful. Everyone can vote. Um, <laughs> that's what I, that's what we want. Uh, okay, Paul. then Paul. are we? I'm. Oh, well, Paul. Do you, well, 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 Paul. It's quick. Sorry, I just I disagree a little bit. I think there should be some sort of chair facilitator, just so the meeting will have like a person that like provides an agenda. Doesn't have to be like uh, the, the the concrete only thing we're pursuing, but it'll help structure. The, the the meeting a little bit okay is my proposal can, is if someone's willing I, to be the, just facilitator can i motion that we table this to not yes, be for next semester do i get a second next semester, semester? semester? Sorry, not, uh, awesome. meeting meeting sorry Same. sounds good uh yeah let let us have some structure and then we'll figure it out like the details but like I, there is a lot of excitement right now and there is no comp anything concrete so once we get something on, then we'll vote into a chair or some structure of a committee. Can I get, I'm, I'm motioning for that. Yeah. yeah that's Everybody who is agree says aye, please. Okay. Any nays? Aye. Any, any nays? Any abstentions? 
Beautiful, the eyes have it. Okay. Hey, look at us. We got through all business. That's how well, we're almost there. We're almost there. But like we made it through like the first part of one page. Let's just clap to you just real quick. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> okay. All right. Re. Oh, oh wait. Do you have something to add about? Oh, Re, yeah, we're going to safety. Okay, so y'all, I know we had a very robust discussion last week mm -hmm. about what a safety event could look like. And then I was paying attention to what's happening on campus and in a series of things that are planned for September, right? Mm -hmm. I have reached out, it was, um, we were talking about maybe, you know, doing something on this. I, I've reached out to Taylor Tackett, whom I, with whom I originally spoke about this idea and asked, you know, for his help because, you know, letting him know that, we're concerned about police presence and and how that will turn off some people, but they play a part in this, the fire department, you know, just making sure that we reach everybody. So the main thing is to make, let, let people know, student body and faculty as well, what they need to do in the event of some major emergency, whether it's weather or an active shooter or something. So I have not heard that from him yet. I would like so I would like to ask, unless anybody has anything brilliant they want to share on this now, that we postpone it one more time until I hear from Taylor, and maybe I'll have him come to the meeting too, so we can really work something out and have something. You know, we don't have to go back to him after we can come up with something. Does that sound okay? I agree. Yeah. yeah. Let's. Cool. Do you want to make a motion, Bree? Oh no, I think since it's her event, she can. She can withdraw when it's her. I can withdraw. Yeah. yeah. I will withdraw this until next week. And if anybody wants to add anything, they can. Otherwise, do you have something no, to add? No, perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was ready. <laughs> okay. Moving on to a new business. Um, Constitution amendments. Like I said at the beginning of the meeting, there are some very confusing words using Robert's rules. That's why we came up with uh, with the placeholder norms. Paul, uh, please email me so we can meet and like having some actual structure of everything you were talking about. Um, and then more than likely, I we will bring more placeholder norms, like more specifically structured in the next meeting. Um, but the wording in the Constitution needs to be addressed for an amendment just because it is conflicting whether we use it with we use Robert's rules or not. Um, so oh. I, I guess I'm motioning that we use placeholder norms, uh, at least for next meeting as well. That, that's all. The ones you presented earlier today? Uh, yeah. I second. Point uh, but but uh, wait, wait, hold on. Before I make a motion, I'm so sorry. Will had his hand up. Yes. Uh, it's not really regarding your uh, constitution amendment, but it is regarding the constitution itself. So I'll wait for Oh, oh, OK, um, I just had a quick point of clarification so I understand. Yes, so I thought you'd made the motion earlier that we adopt those norms while we discuss like like more more complex. I feel like we're motioning for the same thing. Yes, Is that... I, I think I think you're right. OK, then I, I would propose we just uh, carry on with the business of the day. Uh, okay, I know. think OK, I have a stack, but then after the stack completely. Um, I would just suggest responding to the Dean's email. Um, I think having them in the space to kind of go over norms with us and expectations and stuff would be very beneficial. So I just want to put that out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Kristen. Please. 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 I just wanted to clarify really quickly. Are we voting to amend the constitution or are we Not just yet. Not yet. Okay. No. Th this is a more this is a really big fish. Yeah. <laughs> really big fish. Honestly, I would feel like just to let anyone know when we do go do go to do this, whatever you put in for new business, just know that we probably won't get to it that day with the amount of discussion that will go on for amending the constitution. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was. Uh, it's a more of a like, hey, okay, hits up. That's it's conflict. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, I'd like to bring up an uh, issue that was brought up to me about the constitution. Um, and Matt was there for that discussion, actually. Uh, we realize that if the whole debate, there needs to be eight members present. That's correct, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think it needs to, we have to have a meeting. I think it's like we're going to vote. Both. During, yes. Yeah, yeah. We can have a meeting regardless of here. Okay, vote with eight members. But like of those eight, you only need what, uh, what is it, Matt? Super majority? Yeah, like, I'd say 66%. So six members, right? No, 66% or two thirds. 
So what, what's that? Like six I guess that would be six members. What I'm trying to get at is right, just to simplify things, it, it can take six members to change the constitution. And that's not something I think that should be as easy to change as six members. So I think this is something we should address uh, eventually. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. A big fish. Yes. Big fish. Big fish. Big fish. That's what we're going to call the constitution. Uh, um, anyone? Oh, Paul? Uh, I might be mistaken, but I think that um, James accounted for that and that it involves, a t you require a supermajority. Even, uh, of, so you're saying that if there, if we had quorum, a supermajority of that size wouldn't be a problem, I don't think. Uh, it's, uh, you know, and if, if, if we're regularly having that small of a quorum, we have other things to deal with that are bigger problems, like bigger fish, like we were talking about. Um, I think it's, adequately difficult to change our constitution right now yes. as someone who like is interested in bringing resolutions to the table but every week uh finds finds it is thursday and now too late uh due to some time restrictions we have all right i'll stop there okay okay so i'm not making a motion for anything again this is a heads up yes that's that's it um okay uh the look ahead a campaign we talked about that i just wanted to like Again, I wanted to make sure that I had support from all of you before I even did anything, because I think maybe we should also get the office of work, like the orientation office involved in this. Uh, but I'm not going to like move forward with anything unless I have the support of the room. Do you question? Tell me. Um, point of clarification, right? Okay. Um, do you mind clarifying this campaign a little bit? Just, I'll be honest, this is the first time hearing this. Um, so I guess the the issue is that when when you come into the institution and then you say you have a really rough first year, and then a D a D minus will get you credit, will get you credit for the classes. But once you go into your upper division classes, most of them require a C or more to require. So we tend to not think about prerequisites until we're about to register for those classes. So what I'm what I'm proposing or what I'm trying to get some structure for it's a campaign that is like directed to freshmen and sophomores. So they know that they should at least like aim for a C plus because once they get to junior or senior year, it's gonna be tough for them to find out that they cannot register for those classes. So bring awareness. Yeah, that, that that's all. Just an awareness campaign. Okay. And this is a student affairs initiative, right? This just came from Will. Is that right? Uh no, this is me. This is me because I was at the faculty senate meeting, and they were talking about like the, the that issue. Mm -hmm. uh, they're still discussing at next meeting, and I will bring more details soon to it. But just from like a student perspective, I know that I didn't think about prerequisites until I was registered, and that's why we're here for the students. Okay. Can I have also clarification to your point. Um, we shouldn't just campaign it to sophomores and freshmen. We should also do it to junior and seniors because. I thought that as since a D was passing, I wouldn't have to retake a class, and that actually prevented me from graduation last semester. And it's also dependent upon the uh, the department that you're graduating yeah. from. But they'd also don't express to you that yeah, okay, you may have passed, you get your degree, cool. But now when you go to take the next class, they needed that as a prerequisite in a different institution because we don't have a lot of graduate school options here. That you most likely students have to either go to CU Denver or out of state. And those people or those classes may not accept you into their class if you do not have AC or better. So, so that's to do. also take into consideration and express that to our juniors and seniors okay. as well. Thank you. Okay, that's, I didn't know that. Paul just have to comment to uh, helping developing the social media campaign for which event was that again? For this one, the this one above. Look ahead. All right. Okay. Yeah, meet with me and Paul and we, we can work on that. Yeah, and, and this will be definitely like a group effort because these are things yeah. that I didn't know. Um, so, yeah, that, that's all. Again, another heads up. Uh, student success of launch committee, Matt. Yeah. Do you get my message? Do you mind pulling out the email I just sent to show? Uh, let me pull it up. I right. want one representative. I just looked at the email. Yeah, I sent it to everybody just now. That's what I thought you were talking about. Yeah. It sounds similar. Um, so Dr. Simkin sent an email to me, Danny, and a number of other people who aren't on the council. 
Um, he states, uh, we are delighted to invite one representative of student government um, to serve on the implementation implementation team for the student success launch. The team will operationalize pillars one and two of the strategic plan. Specifically, this team will transparently track college slash school level and university wide student success data, as well as the 30, 60, 90 day action plans from college slash schools and other units, facilitate cross functional and university wide coordinations of efforts, and identify and remove systemic obstacles to student success. And he's asking for us to reply with the representative by the fifth. Um. What day is it? The meetings are all interested in here too. You have this email. I, I just sent it. Yeah. Sent it so now you have the email. Um, so it's the first uh, meeting would be the September twelfth. I mean, so it looks like it's all on Tuesdays. Yeah. It's Tuesdays. That's my oh, there's a couple Wednesdays in like two, starting in October. It's like every week, I think. Yes. Until the end of this term. So September is it's on Tuesdays. October looks like it's on. Wait, no, it looks like it's all on Tuesdays. Sorry. It's all on Tuesdays. Yeah, just ran different times. Yeah, different yeah. times. Yeah. Um, I'd say. Um, Currently, I'm on the search committee for the provost. Once that ends, maybe I can take on another committee of this caliber. So, I mean, you can put my hat in front of next semester, but um, as of right now, I'm over. I have a point. Uh, yeah. Chris, we're nominating people? Well, I don't know. I mean, do, 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 do. I, I think I, I feel like we should give people some time to look at this very complex yeah. schedule. And then I'm going to put it in the table for next meeting to see if anybody wants to throw their hat in or if we can nominate because well, it is a um, very we need, the fifth, though, no? well, we need to be for the fifth. So how about yeah, this? How about, the how about instead we all put it in the chat and well, during week so we can take time to like look at our schedules and everything like that. Um, then we I'm sorry, but this one, I don't think we can nominate. I think we need to do yeah. a volunteer basis for this because we can't look at everybody else's schedules because we yeah. can nominate everyone we want that. But if we don't have the capacity in the time yeah. schedules, there's no way we can pull that off. Uh, um, oh, Gabe, wait, Gabe has, maybe Gabe has a thing. Are you Gabe? Yeah, OK, so um, there's always the option to vote via road run via, via like our chat. Um, I think that's written in our constitution or in the handbook. It's it's written somewhere. I know that. So we could what we could do is we could just have someone right now be nominated as like the elections person, someone who can like or something like that. I don't know if there's several people who want to do it or just one person. Um, but yeah, because if it's by the fifth, then that could be like an option if we want to vote. <coughs> okay. Cool. I was just mentioned. Um, because we're planning structure all stuff, I'd suggest if you're not a chair of a major committee at the moment, then maybe this could be something you can take on. Because I mean, like trustee is a major, major commitment for me, and a lot of people have chairs, chairmanships already. You don't want to be double dipping in that. Yes. Yeah. Like if it's it's unequitable. It happened last semester. Um, we wanted to be spread out the work. Who knows? If this is just the okay. meeting a week. John's not here. That's John. Exactly. Yeah. We said be here soon. I'll see. Oh, well. they're the same. So. Fifteen minutes so. Um. Did I? But I, I'm just throwing that. Okay. Ball out I think it would have. I think we should agree that it should be a volunteer-based uh, position. Um, I am more than happy to take on the responsibility of sending the email of who it will be. Uh, but just, I'm gonna put a deadline of. Uh, well, like the the fourth. Let's do the fourth. Mm -hmm. Let's do the fourth. I think uh, we, so the third. Okay, the okay, well, okay. So you have to the whoever wants to take up on the responsibility has today's, and I will put it in my calendar. If nobody tells me by the third, then do we have to tell you in the chat or? Yes. 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 In the chat, please. Okay. Tom. Oh. Uh, I don't have thoughts. Oh, you don't have thoughts? I thought you were right here. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I I think that I've explained this before. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
Sorry. Just making sure you um, um, that okay. no worries. I Can I make a, a motion just to switch something? And X, I want to ask you if this is okay, just because this should only take me 10 minutes and then I'll give you the rest of the meeting time. Can I just motion to switch um, the student work study issues and black error requests real quick? I was wondering, like, are we still doing the black, given that they shut up oh, your yeah. public comment? Did you still want to speak then? That's up to you. Because this was agenda time, and I thought that's what that was the point of public comment. Because they came in, we were just going to address the, the emails, but given that we already did, yeah. The only thing that I think we didn't address was um, we discussed like being in meetings or being in space with you all, but we didn't discuss um, request of a donation and the structure of that. Um, so, I mean, I have no problem, especially if you all want to meet at a latter time to discuss that well. And I, I we can. I would prefer about that, like both of our advisors were physically present in that conversation. Yeah. Is that they're, okay? They're not both here. Cynthia is only you, Dr. Baron, today. Yeah. Right. So, if you, yeah, if you're okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to turn to oh, well, before I, just, uh, um, I will probably I'm gonna try to take on this um, student org request for our office. Uh, I think it's a, a greater discussion to office yes. hours. So yeah. um, I'm going to write a resolution next week to kind of put some rules in place and put a structure in place for us because I do think student org truly is our office. And I'm, well, I'll just mm -hmm. set a random meeting and like see if anyone is well to join, of course. Right. But um, I definitely think this is this, this if we're going to do this, then I mean, I think we should have a rules. One of us needs to be here at all times. We have office hours, um, which you might honestly have a liability form too. If all these students are using this as yeah, kind of store true. stuff here, then we're not liable for it. And probably extension of CBI as well. Okay. So, but these are all things I'll have a discussion about in front of me next week for sure. Okay. Do you want so, to? I'll go after you. I, um, thank you, Mike. I think this is also something that requires a greater conversation. Um, because again, we're all student leaders here. And I think it's important that we trust each other, yeah. and we trust mm -hmm. each other's leadership, yeah. and we trust that people are going to be responsible. Because if I'm going to be frank, somehow some way our stuff came up missing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because Black Europe. It's because someone in SGA moved it into the same yard. And after seeing young, it became missing. And when I asked who moved our stuff or what happened, the CMEI administrators did not disclose who they talked to about the situation. Again, I have no problem with that. And the professional that I spoke to concerning this was the operations manager, um, Dionis Walls, as well as Dr. Tom. So I think. If we want to like point fingers around the situation, again, if there's something that's in an office and it becomes missing and the student public organization did not move that, then there should be some liability ownership of those things because again, we're at that time there were no student club lockers. A hack just had incepted the space that was for student clubs and organizations. So I think the conversation is ongoing. And I think that. In this moment, I can say for me personally, I feel some tension in the air and tension in the room and tension in this dialogue. Um, and I think to alleviate that, we have to really imagine how do we create a co-working space? There has to be storage. There has to be um, clarity on what you all's office hours are. There has to be clarity on what the student works office hours are. And what I know to be true with TSAC, even when I was in it, People did not always honor their office hours. So they could say that they are there, but they're not there. Um, and so I think if we are going to, and also a part of the security measures is the typically is camera one. And then also two, your key card shows when you are entering in and out of that space. Why? When the TSAC office was being, was ransacked by the former SGA president, when we were changing from TSAC, um, when the referendum was coming up, um, at the time, President Graydon um, Wirtz, Wirtz ended up putting all, all kind of stuff in there, saying vote against the referendum. And we were able to identify that because 
One, it was his handwriting, but two, it was also his key card punch that we were able to pull because we didn't know at that time when we were meeting in a virtual setting. For I say only that to say, we should trust the processes that we have, especially if they are in place. But I think this is a greater conversation with student clubs and organizations yeah. and saying some may want to use the space, some may not want to use the space. So what does that look like? But I think at least extending the invitation for those who are actively registered to participate in this imagining will help alleviate some of the burden from the wall. And there's strength in numbers. So that's my recommendation at the end of the day. You all get to decide on what you want to do. But I can say, having worked with my colleagues in the past, if you're here, you're brilliant. You know what I mean? Not just in TSEC, but if you're here in college, you're brilliant. You're smart. You're adults. I trust your judgment. And if there's something that we don't agree on, we can figure that out. But I think not more is the merrier, but I think at least extending an invitation to sort of dialogue, you're covering your butts. Uh, and that would be my little nugget. So at the end of the day, it's up to you all, but that's my really inspiration. I'm, I'm going to close one like, just discussion with one comment. I am a lot for structure. I love structure. I love structure. I love structure. <laughs> I am like, I am the person with 20 different highlighters. Color-coded, <laughs> uh, color-coded uh, color no, notebooks. Um, I agree. I think this is a bigger conversation also for us as a council on how to hold each other accountable er, and our office hours, our presence in the office and ours getting our job together, like our jobs done regarding like our committees. Um, with that being said, if we are serious about bringing student orgs in and like offering that space, we also have to be serious about us being there for them physically. Um, so just just give 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 me some grace in that structure, and I I will get it together. I will make a color cal color coded calendar for you. <laughs> Only yeah, green, just to be clear. Whatever I you can, I will make your spreadsheet so you can pick your color for yourself. That's fine. Um, but yeah, thank you for your time and bringing that up. Okay. Um, our my motion. We go to the second. To what was next? Work study. Yes. Okay. Cool. So. Okay. I am speaking on behalf of a few students that have come to me and told me that they have very severe trauma with work study and financial aid these past couple semesters and even all the way back to 2020. Um, I'm bringing up this issue because it is quite disrespectful how they have not provided enough transparency with students. Nonetheless, students who are non-traditional and depend on work study and financial aid to get through their rent, to get through their bills, and to get through paying for their um, stuff for their, their children at that. So um, this is on behalf of uh, Maggie. Oh, I should have got the last name written down. Anyway, their name is Maggie. Um, so this is kind of like what was happening in, uh, let's start the spring. Of, this is just like what they said. So I just told them I was going to say what happened today. Um, then we'll talk about like what kind of they're asking from us to help get started on creating possibly a union. Um, I will answer your question after I talk about their problem because we have very limited time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, okay. So Maggie was rewarded work study um, in the mid spring of 2023. So this last spring, uh, quit their job. So that way, because they didn't have to work, right? They had their work study to take on that opportunity. So then they continued to go through the spring semester, no work study, uh, no word from work study, no word from financial aid. Um, and then she saw when it come when it got to, to the summertime. Now, when summertime came around, she saw that a bunch of people were getting, I'm sorry, they saw that a bunch of people were getting uh, work study, but they weren't being awarded anything. Now, mind you, um, they were also going to be taking a field course, which is about a two week, two to three week course out in like the Grand Teton in Yellowstone. So they will be traveling. The whole reason why they need this summer um, work study. You can't just be applying for jobs and be like, oh, yeah, can you like hire me in three weeks? Like, that's not how that works. That's why we depend on our work study and financial aid. So they never got the work study. First weeks, first three weeks, uh, they can't apply for the jobs, like I was saying. Um, so when they looked at the estimate for the uh, fall semester, so they just did what they had to do. I'm not sure how that played out. They didn't explain that part. But um, the estimate was said that for the fall 2023, it was supposed to be um, about 12K in loans with no work set. That was just the estimate that they had given. So they went ahead and signed a lease for a new apartment, gauging that that's what they could afford with what was being given by the estimate. Now, granted, that's just an estimate, but usually they're pretty close on with their estimate, right? So 
they took out uh, the fall loans when they finally got to them, when they were finally dispersed, were only 2,000 and 10K in work study. Granted, yes, that is 12K, but y'all have to understand in upper division credits in biology, I, I don't knock other degrees, but biology is really, really hard. Our classes are three hours at a time. For every hour that you are in that class, you need to spend another three hours studying. That's just studying, not even reviewing everything else and practicing and lab time. So it's really hard. So yes, they got 10K in work study for the fall slash spring, so 5,000 a semester, but that's paying it back in labor and time, which they don't have. Okay, that's the whole reason they were getting loans. So um, they can't even get, so that's 5,000 a semester. According to our rules, we can't even get 5,000 a semester because we can only work 30 hours. If you do the math, you're supposed to work 44 hours, 44 and a half hours, each week in order to get 5,000 a semester. And that's not possible. You can't do that. It, we, would, we would literally get in trouble by financial aid, MSU Denver for working that, those many hours. Our cap is 30 a week, period. Um, so then uh, what had happened next is they went to financial aid and they were like, hey, um, this is going on. Can you please just like cancel it? Like, I just want to take the loans. I'll figure something else out. They were like, um, no, you can't do that. Um, what we're going to have to do is, uh, or they said that they were going to help them and then they didn't and that they should have treated it as an estimate and not as something that was solid. So until they get until they had got their revised reward notice, which even when we get our revised reward notice, they just tell us like, oh, this is basically you don't have to do anything further. Just check your account. As we all know, and we've all seen that that's exactly pretty much what that email sums up to be. Um, and they asked two different people about that and they said the exact same thing. So that's one instance. This other student, um, Reese. Uh, he, the gentleman here back in 2020 was hired by MSU for, um, and then for work study, he was living downtown. He only had he didn't want direct deposits. So he only wanted checks. So become come around October, November ish. He didn't get any check. He like he missed a check. Mind you, his rent is due like the very next week. So he's like, OK, how am I supposed to? You know, so we went out of financial aid and we was like, hey, um, y'all messed up. I what happened? And they were like, oh, we sent it to a Wells Fargo account. He's like, I don't have a Wells Fargo account. I signed up for checks only. So MSU then said, we will pay you next pay period, which was in the next two weeks. His rent's due the next week. And they're like, mm, sorry, too bad, so sad. You're going to have to wait. So they didn't take any accountability, didn't say who was in charge of it, and just basically made him go take out a loan and have to wait till he got his money back the next pay period. Um, so then, and there was no accommodations for it, like I was mentioning. And then this summer, once again, heard nothing from financial aid, from advisor, HR, nothing. So he went to the office um, where they said that Workday was still getting worked out. Of course, we all heard that narrative. Um, and then they lied to him saying that it takes one to 20 hours to resolve a problem with a student account, which that's a lie because they were able to help my account in less than a day. Um, so then the student shouldn't, and then they, they, the messed up part is somebody told the student that they shouldn't be upset because it's happening to thousands of students, making their point and their feelings very invalidated. That is not okay. Um, also, once again, nobody held accountable, no accommodations, no nothing. No resources even given to the student, might I add. Um, so finally, he was awarded work study after going to the director of financial aid. So he was told that you don't necessarily have to go full time in the summer. It was just preferred as long as you were enrolled full time in the fall. And that's how you could get your work study. So then um, then that work study was then taken away halfway through his summer semester while he was in the field and got him messaged by an advisor saying, hey, your work study has been cut off mid semester of the summer. So then there he is again, not having anybody after they had already told him. And the reason was because he wasn't full time summer student which he had just been told that it was OK that he wasn't a full time summer student as long as he was taking classes and a full time enrolled fall student. Um, sorry, this is really all over the place, but yeah. Um, so that's how that happened. And then another student uh, goes by the name of Ian. He took uh, this was fall of 2022. It took 11 weeks, 11 weeks for him to even get hired on through work study. Um, to start his work. So by that time, he had already ran out of money. We only have like, what, five weeks left of the semester. So he basically didn't make up enough to um, earn back the money that he had completely spent through in that 11 weeks because he quit his job after he had already been told he had been accepted and they just needed to process him to get him to like start working at the institution. Um, hold on, I'll get to you. I all the questions after this. Mm -hmm. um, so then he was told that... Um, at least classes in the summer. OK, and he was told the exact same thing that at least if he took some class in the summer and was a full time student in the um, fall that he would be guaranteed work study. So come summer, um, he ended up getting a month late on his first paycheck for the summer work study. So he went a month without pay 
And then he finally got um, the second or third pay period. So I guess the second month he got a uh, he got his paycheck. And then after the very first paycheck, he got his two thousand five hundred dollar uh, work study revoked. And they said that the, they were forcing the department to pay him those funds. And they can't do that. Department doesn't have those kind of funds to pay their students that way. That's why this is on work study. Or if it comes from a scholarship, um, it's supposed to be considered uh, like basically grant funds or something. It's a different pot of money, basically. But it's not supposed to come from the department. So they said that they forced the department to do that, but the upper department couldn't afford to do that. So my understanding, he still didn't get paid. Um, and they don't understand that like these students in specifically the science biology department, they were working in um, the the fuck is it called where you keep plants the greenhouse and that was very important like that was basically their their academics life work right there like they spent time growing these species it doesn't just grow overnight like i don't know if y'all have plants but like some of them just die like you have to really pay attention to them they had a very specific uh system in set for their pest control and all that other stuff the pest got completely out of control because they didn't have enough volunteers to go in there completely ruined like one professor's probably life's work and then another set of students like their entire semester's work so then they have to completely start over like they literally work study ruined lives like actual life so if y'all vegan i hope you really out here advocating for this right now um so uh and that stuff just can't be easily replaced like it's not just you can go buy a new plant like some of these species were very hard to find and how to go through a lot of stuff to get them in this um greenhouse in order to be grown um and taken care of like for, we have a fucking pineapple in there okay like i don't know if y'all know but a pineapple doesn't just grow up out the ground okay like it's wild so with that all being said um i think that first of all we need to talk with someone financially we do have a director and i think they came to one of our meetings and that's something that we all talked about um is that we want to have a meeting with her um, we want those students to come to a TSAC meeting, um, have her explain, obviously, what MSU has control over, uh, and then what we don't have control, yes. like what's state versus what's MSU Denver, because we get it. There's stuff that you can't control. These students have already accepted that change isn't going to happen this semester, but they do not want this to continue to happen to other students because you shouldn't have to take out a loan when they're telling you that you're going to get your loans. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then another thing is they just wanted to then come up with a system for financial aid from what they knowing what MSU can control to provide complete transparency to students. We're tired of getting this refer to your financial aid revised award notice. Like we're tired of that. We want to know, OK, so you don't know what we're getting. What should we plan for? Or at least give us a crash course on how to plan for, you know, financial aid. No offense, but fucking it's over. Like we, we need that. We need a plan for these students because they're really relying on these these funds and they're not getting uh, planned out. So we just they need your help. And I think the rest of the student body also has help. I'm sure every one of us has um you know dealt with something from financial aid that was not okay and affected us in a very negative manner so okay whoever was next who's gonna do map me oh. mike and re and then will i think mm -hmm. because uh re hasn't talked very much i think I, yeah to we first. should have okay. first i just wanted to ask if you don't mind um that if we speak to whomever's in charge of work study or financial aid financial aid at the top of the castle for that um that maybe we're able to give them a list and say we're advocating on behalf of students that's our job but we need you to change the system and this is this is a list of things that are problems rather than have the students come here i think that could be a really elongated mm -hmm. process and probably wouldn't be very satisfactory to them but they need to be accountable and they need to give us reasonable answers as well as all these students that are having these problems because there's yeah. no consistency and there's it seems random and it's yeah. about budgetary constraints that no one knows the answer to so yeah right and the whole reason why i say they want to come here is because these students want to form a student work union here at msu denver so if we, we have to give them that right so if they want to be here and get involved in these systems and understand things we have to give them that opportunity i think that that's part of our roles on this platform is to give them that so i completely agree but they do want to be here because they do want to understand these things and if they can't be here i will be here and then relay that information so then they can gather their schedules stuff because i think some of them are seniors so that's like the bigger portion is when you're senior, like getting your life together very last minute. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to that, that's why I say that they want to meet with them and get some transparency going on, because you're right. It does seem very at random and this probably affects thousands of students. So, yeah, uh, I want to I don't have a question. I want to actually add some stuff to what you're saying. So also interesting about your student having issues with full time on the website. It says you have to take in six credits. 
Um, but also I found out because my conversations were work study. Um, it sounds like they actually overspent work study money by about 80,000 last year uh, oh, yes. because banner and workday weren't communicating. So banner is where you get your award mm -hmm. and workday is where you track your hours and they weren't communicating. So they actually overspent the budget by about 80,000. Um, and also, I think it's a good time to have conversations with them because it sounded like they might also be trying to modify some of their procedures um, and potentially budget aspects. Um, and lastly, I I think we might need to do a bigger push, but I also did kind of drop the overspending piece with Met Media. Ooh, <laughs> I go for I agree. Was and that was over. So we're gonna go. Oh, and well, let them finish their conversation. And you guys are good. Mike. Uh, 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 right on. Um, we can even go to the boss of the director of financial aid. Simpkins is in charge of financial aid. So if you even want to, I mean, Simpkins has been pretty recipient, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, receptive. Receptive to our um our our struggles with financial aid in the past. Um, if you brought these to him. I think he'd be in here next week. Oh, I really feel like he would. He'd be in here next week. And um, I agree with the main. Also, in terms of like students, we can hold a town hall. We can book the big, the big, uh, the big room. Typically, let's do a town hall, have a bunch of tables together, have or put these people on a stage and have students just ask the questions. I would love that. Yeah. I agree. And then, I would love that. And then it was Will? Will the Paul. Real quick, I just want to bring y'all's attention to the word that excited in the chat, which I think is yeah. important. If you can scroll up, up please. A little further up, right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it, it seems like it's like a bureaucracy issue. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because obviously they're not handling their money the way that they should. Could you go back down? Okay. Am I okay to? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to. Pitching Paul. Paul. I just wanted to uh, speak on the. Um, I heard you say uh, that these students were like talking union, which I, you know, y'all know me. I think that's cool. I, I actually um, I think that's great. I do th think to kind of contextualize any efforts around that, I think there's just some important things to consider. And one that's, you know, union efforts need to be done by people who are working out of place. It can't be done by some outside group. And so, you know, if this is just a couple of students and then a student government comes in with all these big ideas, you know, it's not going to work. It has to be an idea that like a, a bunch of people in a workplace kind of have themselves. Right. And um, I'm all for like facilitating that democratic process. But another thing to consider is that by helping facilitate that process, we would very much be setting ourselves up in opposition to the school's administration, whether we like to recognize in us versus them or not. Um, and if you ask me which side we're on, easy answer, but I don't know that we all, um, uh, I mean, it's something to consider, right? Um, and uh, I'm all for also kind of creatively thinking how we can positively impact the financial conditions and the working conditions of student workers on campus um, more broadly. But yeah, I'd have to, I'm interested in talking to you more about that, Naomi, and also just kind of having everybody think about those well, last thing, last thing on it. Um, undergraduate work study organizing has the added difficulty of the fact that these people are leaving very soon, right? Um, I used to do retail organizing, and a big thing I'd run into is people saying, oh, well, I'm not going to be here much longer anyway, so I'm not interested. And I can imagine that's a, uh, a big difficulty. So huge undertaking. Um, takes years. There's an LRB related struggle. So I definitely want us to understand the gravity of what the, what that means when we when we talk about it. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested. Thanks, Paul. I think a lot of it was uh, maybe it was a little bit of brainstorming on how can how can we support uh, work study work study students. Um, I mean, if they if they want to start an union, we are no one to tell them not to. Um, but we are here for students and however that looks like. Um, um, yeah. 
Anybody else has anything to say? Gabe? No, never mind. Anybody else? Oh, Thomas, I'm sorry. Yeah, I wanted to say very briefly that uh, antagonisms with the administration. Uh, um, I personally, I'm like okay with that. That's not like I where so our okay. job and our primacy is to advocate for students, yeah. not hold the line of the current institution. That means like affecting policy so that it better affects students. I I, <laughs> I think at the end of the day, it's us advocating for students. However, they 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 need to be supported. Okay. Um, I know this is y'all speaking. I just wanted to encourage you um, because I know currently um, who's the director of financial aid personally. Um, there are a lot of things because I've had issues with my own financial aid. Um, but there are things that are outside of Curling's control. Yeah. That is an institutional thing mm -hmm. um, that she walked into because she's, I think she's been here almost a year now. I may be mistaken. So she inherited a lot of this function right. from the institution prior. And then I also wanted to also share that I think it's important when we are critiquing the administration to know who does what or what falls right. in whose domain. And that's why I mentioned that at the beginning as well. Yeah, right. And then so, that's what. So that it doesn't get completed mm -hmm. to a person because, um, and I, I'm going to say this piece and then I'm going to leave it. Perfect example is we had a provost, he wasn't even very long. The faculty workload. Uh, request to change how many classes faculty had to teach did not pass through our board of trustees and he left as a result of that um, because of the political aspect if dr davidson didn't support it and you she's the first in command and he's the second in command and the thing the optics so i want to stress to you all the political optics but then also to how those political optics create further marginalization depending on the identities of the individuals. And so I think it's yes, tread carefully, but also understand this is someone's livelihood, this is someone's career. And depending on their salient identities, how you show up impacts and implicates them differently. Yeah. Um, and so I don't feel it's necessarily to important to disclose the ethnicity of currently, but I can say that just be mindful of where the engagement is. Right. The engagement is around how do we retain our students, which is a student affairs and the university thing, how we raise money, um, an endowment and foundation thing, what the state gives us or doesn't give us. And then also too, based upon when our students complete their FAFSA. If you're not completing your FAFSA quick, you can get packaged as quick. So there's there's all the, the devils in the details. So right. I think it's it's partly a us thing if we're not doing our FAFSAs and doing our part. And depending on what we're putting in our FAFSA, that's a part of it. Are we applying for scholarships, X, Y, Z? It determines kind of like how our packaging is. But I would definitely encourage you all, based upon what I've heard, Call Curleen in so you can hear from her first. And then, based upon what you hear, if there's still more, then I would take it up the left. That would be my recommendation. So, okay. on response to that, I have spoken with her last semester, um, and we were both kind of vibing on like that, that motion that like she walked into a fucking shit show, to put it very simply. And it's a really big mixture of problems between. There's not enough cross training within the JSSB building of admissions and registrars and people understanding how to tell students like what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right, how to proceed forward, things like that. So I like I said, we need to have a discussion of what MSU can control, what MSU can't. We need to start with them, bring in Sipkins and uh Curling, right? And uh just let them kind of like guide a conversation and then talk about maybe getting a panel so students can ask. For transparency, not necessarily for change, but for transparency. And then once we get the transparent part out of the way, then they can maybe look into the holes of where we can do better and help the institution advocate for a better system to help these students. I think that is like our best 
go to when it comes to it. So I can reach out to Simpkins and Curling and see if they'd be willing to come to our meeting. If not this week, then maybe next week as well. We can just put aside like maybe 20 minutes for them to have a conversation with us. Y'all are interested. I, I agree. But just like we have talked about like historical context within other entities and other people, I think um, bureaucracy is complicated and, mm -hmm. and it's complex. Um, so before we start calling people in, I think like this is a bigger conversation with the rest of us mm -hmm. to see like how we're going to approach these people. Yeah. Well, um, that's the thing though, is that like you need to talk to them about how to approach our students and okay. that's on them. So I'm not going to approach them like, hey, like you fucked up. <laughs> no, I'm just asking me like, hey, he said I would like to have a meeting about how you know how it works how does financial aid work how does financial aid work how does the money flow come in like can you just explain to us the system and that's it okay. i don't want to express like you know the students problems and stuff yet with them i want to express just we need to know how the systems work and then we could start deciding what kind of questions we then, can ask them then i propose that like you see that like, you seem very invested in this so i propose that by next meeting you bring a, like a structure of like this is what i'm going to do and this is how we're going to do it and then we we vote I that's a bill no, 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 it's not a bill. It's just like that we're all on board on how this is being. Approved. No, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reach out to whether you guys like it or not. I'm reaching out to Simpkins and Curling because I'm doing this on behalf of students. Mm -hmm. And okay. I'm going to talk to them and be like, hey, can you come to a TSAC meeting and explain to us how the system works? As simple as that. No ethnicities, no genders, no nothing involved. Just come and explain how the system works, period. That's all it comes down to. I want them to explain how the money comes in and out. It has nothing to do with individualized people. I want to know how the system works, and then that's it. Then we can devise our questions from there. Because if we don't know how the system works, how are we supposed to come up with questions? Okay, they'll reach out to Sinkins and let us know when he wants, like, if he's available, and we'll bring him up. And curling as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, we are out of time. Can we please stay with this for next week, Paul? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make a motion that we adjourn. Uh, we yeah, I'm not going to make people I stay. Appreciate well, all right. I'll, all in favor? All right. Gosh. I was going to tell you for the.